All right. Well, I thought I'd give a little bit of an update. Let's turn the music down a bit. A little bit of an update about where I am with the uh, the audio system. Of course, you've seen the videos where I've gone through the installation, um, and I even did a little video on the tuning. But having said that, there have been some uh, significant changes since that time, which I'll talk to now. So really, this is a watch this video first video. So turns out, you remember I put a Bose center speaker in this location and had a channel associated with that, so mapping into the head unit through the amplifier in the back. Well, the truth of the matter is, I was never completely satisfied with how the sound was with that uh, Bose uh, speaker compared to how it sounded against the um, the uh, Hertz uh, tweeters and Hertz woofers that are located in the doors. It only sounded any good when it was so quiet that you couldn't hear it at all and um, in fact I then got in touch with somebody at Hertz uh, to see whether I could get hold of a tweeter to locate in this position. Um, in fact actually you can't buy these tweeters um, separately but in conversation with the uh, the guy there, he um, he really suggested very strongly that I ditched this uh, center speaker. By losing this center speaker, use that would then free up one channel, and I had another channel spare, and that means that I can go active on this tweeter and that woofer, that tweeter and this woofer, and of course in the the rear, I use the crossover. So basically losing one of the pairs of crossovers and then separating the signals and using digital crossovers for the um, for the speakers in the doors at the front and that's provided me with a significant increase in the amount of control uh, that I have over the sound provided separate equalization for the tweeters and the woofers now as opposed to equalization across the two through the crossover um, and uh, yeah that's uh, that's a significant improvement I'm going to hop to the boot now and show you what's going on there. So, okay, so now, I have, whereas before I had four crossovers, I only have two crossovers now. Actually, what I needed to do was I needed to run a, a couple of sets of wires from the two spare channels for the tweeters, and they will be... So you can see down here... I've put a couple of small wires in, they are using the QAD wire, the same wires that I use for the tweeters. In other words, this type of wire here, uh, coming from the amplifier, and that comes around here and that is connected up to the uh, tweeter lines that would have been in the crossover originally. The clear wire here, which would be incoming, was connected to the woofer. So that allowed me then to connect up, all hidden away behind here, the, um, the front door speakers in fully active mode to the amplifier. Um, also, I find that the this port, this Helmholtz resonator that exists in the subwoofer, uh, causes more problems than uh, more problems than it solves. Actually, so I have um, I've blocked this up with uh, foam, glued that, and put those into position there. So that closes that port up, and that makes this sub a lot more controllable in terms of its frequency response. Um, so overall, it's, uh, it's working out quite well now. So yeah, so if I had to do it again, so basically go active in the front using um, four channels, passive in the rear doors using two channels through the crossover, and then uh, block the port up in the subwoofer. And uh, of course, I've redone all the equalization. So it's really very, very much in the fine tuning now. and. Uh, <laughs> I think it's actually taking me far more time to, to tune and optimise than it took to do the installation of all the wires. Anyway, there you go. That's where we are. Yeah, I wanted to talk to how I um, made the latest round of measurements. So this setup differs from what I showed in an earlier video. I'd mentioned previously that I'd planned to use this Zonar uh, sound card, but the problem was that in fact this has only got a, an SP diff on it and there's no optical output, which was why I used the wireless system. But in fact, for, as I'll go on to explain later, I used, um, I used the computer system. I wanted to use this to, um, to work out what the, the latency in the system was on each channel. So rather than using a tape measure, actually using um, the uh, REW software uh, to, to send signals um, and actually measure the time delay between the signal and the response of the speaker to get a more accurate relative set of data. 
and that meant um, avoiding using the or ditching using the um, the audio winner system, which was I thought a little bit too variable. What I needed to do was to be able to convert this SP diff into an optical signal. Um, so then I bought this little bit of kit here. It's a converter, a toss link to coaxial converter. So I can link the coaxial cable there to a coaxial input on that and then take an optical output on that. So that optical output there, you can see that glowing there. So by having a sound card like this, you can uh, you can connect the microphone here to a set of phono plugs here and then do an internal loopback calibration, which is great. And then I also have this microphone here, which has got its own calibration curve. So, so that's what I what I have subsequently come to use: a combination of the um, Asus Zonar sound card USB sound card connected to the computer, going from a, a toss link to coaxial uh, converter, so converting the coaxial SP diff to an optical cable, and then sending that optical signal into the amplifier. So that's how to get the signals in and then measuring the responses from the speakers using the calibrated microphone, which is again connected via USB back to the computer. Yeah, so that's what I did, and that's how I, um, how I did the measurements that I will talk to shortly. Yeah, so first of all, let's remember how the configuration was originally. I had four crossovers, uh, and I had the wiring... Uh, front left, front right, rear left, rear right, through crossovers, so the crossovers separated the woofer and the tweeter here. A centre speaker and a subwoofer. At that time, what I did was I used um, uh, distances that I'd measured between the speakers and the microphone or the driver listening position for, for, for all of the, the speakers. And I actually used the distances from the woofer to the, uh, uh, to the microphone. Now, if we have a look at the current configuration, front left, front right are going to the front left woofer and front right woofer. The rear left and rear right go to the crossover, which means that they feed the tweeters and the woofer. And now we have two separate outputs, one for the front left tweeter and one for the front right tweeter. So now we have to consider that we can have independent timing measurements or independent distances between the woofers and the tweeters in the front rather than some averaged value or assumed value that we had previously. And there's the subwoofer in bridge mode. So that's how I've used all of the, uh, all of the uh, inputs and outputs in the current configuration. And then, well, now we have the distances, but I'm gonna to come to the distances in a moment as to how I got those. Because I had the separate lines for the front tweeters and front woofers, what I decided to do was to use the front right tweeter as a reference signal generator, so a, a, a pip that would start the clock timer in the computer. The front right tweeter, well that's actually my reference time. So if everything's working perfectly, um, the reference signal is sent and then a measurement signal is sent and it would have zero milliseconds uh, difference between the, the, between the reference timing and the um, and the actual measured timing. But there's actually 16, well, was it uh, 16 millimeters difference in distance uh, and 0 0.0465 milliseconds error. And if you measure that a couple of times, you'll see that there is, you know, there's some movement there. There's, so, I, I, you know, I'm not exactly sure why that isn't exactly zero, but it isn't exactly zero. And it's an indication of a certain amount of error that's measurable in the system. But that means then, if I assume that that's my zero reference value, uh, the difference distance between the front right tweeter and the microphone, I can then measure, for example, the front left tweeter, 5.6 inches or 440, so 44.7 centimeters according to this, uh, or a delay that's associated with 1.3 milliseconds. And if I measure that multiple times, then I can have you know slightly different numbers but then you can take an average from it and get a and get a, a consistent distance relative to the reference front right tweeter and in that way I went through the speakers and ultimately was able to build up uh, a set of measurements um, that was not always completely consistent so for example I don't quite know why but there was a few numbers that seemed to be quite significantly odd uh, on the front right 
uh, woofer. I don't know whether it's an intern glitch in the software. Anyway, so I eliminate. I, I took a look at these and I eliminated the things that I didn't think looked right, and and I included uh, parameters that I measured that I thought looked good. So here's my front right. Here's the reference and that. Okay, so it's these small. Uh, negative numbers it's effectively zero and that is the the reference point on which these other things are measured and then yeah, so the subwoofer I mean there's a lot more movement in the numbers for the subwoofer but I'll come back to that so I mean if we have a look at the actual distances for the speakers they they differ from actual measurements by a certain amount in fact they're typically a little bit lower than you would expect based upon a tape measure which is of course theoretically impossible so it must be indicative of some underlying yeah, some underlying glitch or some underlying bias that exists in the software, the way it works, and I really don't quite understand that. But I'm just assuming that the, you know, that the relative numbers are what are important here. What is interesting is that the subwoofer number is very different from from the distance measurement. Obviously, the subwoofer is 1.7 meters away, uh, but actually it looks like it's over six meters away. Well, I mean, clearly it, it isn't that far away. But the response time, the delay, the latency in the subwoofer is significantly higher than it is for the other speakers. So what's the reason for that? Well, I mean, you know, sort of digging around on the Internet, some of the things that I'd suspected appear to be the case. People talk about the, you know, the increase. In, I mean, obviously, the electronics is basically the same in, in this case because it's all going through the VX amplifier. But of course, the physical mass of the speaker cone in the uh, subwoofer is much, much larger than it is in the other speakers. And I suspect that large part of the latency here is the fact that um, it physically takes a little bit more time to actually start to move the cone so there's a little bit of a, a lag in the system there that doesn't occur with the smaller speakers so that's the beauty of making these measurements with the software so anyway so that's how you you go about it you use um, you use this impulse uh, measurement uh, uh, to to work out the the delays um, so that's what I did and I, and I put those numbers in in here you can see the the numbers that I had in the spreadsheet are now are now in the system. Um, there's a little bit of a more of a delay on the subwoofer here. I'll come back to that in a minute um, and talk about that. Uh, what I was also able to do was to make frequency response measurements, and now of course I have um, equalization on the front left and front right woofer, the rear speakers, and I've also got a equalization potential on the front left and front right tweeter. Uh, that's the equalization banks are there. So this is the front left uh, system here. Yeah, so there are a couple of things. So this point here uh, behaves like a, a, a base control. So it's a, a sort of large uh, hump that, that is applied across the data. Uh, if I were to uh, set that to, to zero, um, you can see that is more like what the equalization would would have been without that uh, uh, three and a half uh, decibel boost that I've put in there, and I've also done a little bit of boosting here with this parameter here for the uh, for the higher frequencies. Although the actual crossover starts to to bite in around here on this curve, um, these equalization parameters are obtained in the same way that I described in an earlier video using uh, REW to uh, uh, carry out um, the uh, equalization uh, profile using a, a, a house curve that I was working with. Um, so yeah, so that's what I've done. I've gone through and I've uh, applied equalization in a way that I think um, it improves the, uh, the frequency response of the system. Um, I've even, whilst blocking the port on the subwoofer, I've I've, I've reduced the, um, the, the the main energy output of the subwoofer at around 40 hertz with some equalization to smooth out a bump there and then use that to boost the energy in the subwoofer so that it tends to fill the gap in from around 50 hertz to 80 hertz in a better way that bridges that between the frequency response on the uh, on the main speakers. So yeah, anyway, I mean, I'll put a link to this file um, you can make of it what you will. Um, there is a feature that exists within REW, which is called subwoofer alignment. Um, let me see, where is that? If you're on all sound pressure level and you click on controls, you do alignment tool, what you can do is you can select two curves and you can put the cursor at a particular position 
and then you can do align the face slopes at the cursor position. Uh, you can look online for this. And this is a way, supposedly, of working out what delay you need to put between your main speakers and your subwoofer in order to assure that the phase is aligned at the, the particular point or the crossover frequency that you're interested in. I have to say, I was, and actually this feature might only be available on the current beta version of REW, so that you might have to check for. But I actually found this very difficult to use. Ultimately, I couldn't really make that much sense of it, so I gave up with it. Um, and in the way that I, the way that I did actually uh, align the subwoofer in a in a good way was first of all by ear. So what I did was I was just playing around with it. So I put this six twenty one centimeters uh, or six point two meters distance that I'd calculated using the impulse response in REW, and this had a zero value here for additional delay. And I was listening to that, and that was you know it is, was what it was. Uh, and then I decided to just put another number in there, so I stuck in 10, 10 uh, milliseconds, which is quite a sig 10 milliseconds, so what was that? In, if you think about a, a, the crossover of, of 80 hertz, the period of an 80 hertz signal, in other words, from peak to peak, that is 12.5 um, milliseconds. So 10 milliseconds is, well, it's the better part of a full cycle, actually, um, of, of a peak and trough at, at, at 80 hertz, which is the crossover frequency, as you can see here, that I've used in this. And I noticed immediately that there was more bass, right? So I thought, oh, okay, so there's, there's some more work to be done here. And I knew that there was a problem with the phase alignment that I couldn't get to the bottom of using the REW software. So what I did was I, um, I, uh, I created... Uh, of an 80 hertz file using this uh, generator so using a sine wave at 80 hertz which is my crossover frequency I made it I don't know however long it was three minutes or something like that and I saved that to a file um, so that's a quite a loud uh, minus two decibel full scale so it's a loud 80 hertz file uh, and took that into the car and then now this is a trick from the old World War II. The Coast Guard would use an antenna which they would rotate uh, so that it was um, giving a minimum signal from uh, radio signals that were coming from ships. You find that the ear is more sensitive to a low noise than it is to a peak, so a trough to a peak. So what you do is you invert the subwoofer, so invert the polarity by 180 degrees, and then put in numbers here, move the numbers around, so that the subwoofer is as quiet as possible when you're playing 80 hertz, so at the crossover frequency. I switched off all of the speakers apart from the subwoofer and the front right woofer, and I played an 80 hertz tone, and I moved this around until I got the quietest sound, and so they were almost completely cancelling each other out, which was about 8.1 milliseconds. And then by re or correcting the phase, so putting them back in phase, you're then, instead of being at a minimum, you're actually at a maximum. Uh, and that is where the, the bass is, is now as closely coupled to the front right woofer in this case, and I did it with the front left, of course, it's about the same. And they, they, these, the front left and front right, are nice and coherent at the listening position. Um, so that was the way that I managed to get the subwoofer tightly integrated with the uh, the main woofers. Mm, whether is that the is that the wave front that I've zeroed in? Is that the actual wave front from the first impulse, or is it the second one? I'm afraid I can't get my head around it, and I'm not sure the equipment that I've got here is enough to uh, is is sensitive enough for, to to give me the answer to that. But certainly from my ears perspective, it's uh, it's very good. It's very good. So I think those numbers are pretty good, and they should be pretty good for everybody's. Uh, Audi Q3, assuming that you're using a VX800 amplifier and use the same subwoofer and the same speakers, that, that should be good from car to car. If you use significantly different equipment, then it'll be uh, significantly different, I would imagine. So, that is really all I have to update now. Um, so, I'll leave it there. And uh, I hope these videos have been helpful. Cheers.